We're glad to know you're still there and watching The Breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa. Right now, we're taking our topic, uh, which is rising unemployment and inflation, the cost of subsidy removal. And we're glad that we're being joined by our guest uh, this morning, Mr. Joe uh, Femi Dagunro, a chief strategist with uh, Westphalia Resources. Good morning and welcome to uh, the program, Mr. Dagunro. Yes, good morning. Okay, we're, we're talking about something that is uh, worrisome to Nigerians, unemployment and so many other things that are coming. Inflation as well, because of the uh, fuel subsidy removal. Now, we're being told that fuel subsidy was a waste of money, and now that it has been removed, there will be excess money freed for other things to be done. Yet, we're seeing unemployment as a result of the fuel subsidy removal, we are seeing inflation skyrocketing, rocketing rather, as a result of uh, the fuel subsidy removal. Is it doomsday for us, or what do we, what are we looking at for our future, at least the nearest future? Uh, Sorry. Okay, fuel subsidy removal. The cost of fuel subsidy removal, according to experts, is what has given rise to unemployment and inflation. What are your comments? Well, I think it's... Uh, then we have to leave it. Unemployment has been in the year of... Uh, And it is not something we are used to buying for a good higher price. And the higher price is normal. Uh, so that will make a little bit um, difference compared to what we are having before. Generally, unemployment is a global problem. Okay, I think we have lost. Um the connection there with Mr. Joe Femi Dagunro, Chief Strategist was Failure Resources. As soon as he's able to return, we are going to bring him to talk about what we are talking uh, this morning. We also hope to address the, uh, the fact that federal government may revive economy by unlocking $1 trillion in asset sale. Uh, okay, so what kind of assets are they selling? Who are they selling it to? And what does it really mean uh, to unlock uh, this, this potential in that regard? Okay, so we'll find out what that will be with our next guest if we have that opportunity to see him. But right now, we're still hoping that Mr. Joe Femi Dagunro, a chief strategist of Space Failure Resources, will rejoin us. Okay, Mr. Joe Femi Dagunro, you're back. Yes, thanks. What? what I was trying to say is that um, unemployment is a global phenomenon. Inflation, recession, uh, you know, it's not something that is uh, only uh, happening in Nigeria. But the problem is, fuel subsidy removal has come into play and it has aggravated the feeling of the people because now most of everything has gone up, no doubt about it. But we have to live with it, and this full subsidy has come to stay. Now, the issue is how do we tackle it? The education now is for the people to say, you know, how do we go about it? And the government is saying, no, we have a solution, palliative measures reform. Uh, MSME, we have a single digit loan and all these things, but people are not seeing all these things coming. And now people will be agitating and telling, how do we live our life? How do we cope with this situation? And it's so annoying sometimes that all the things, there are no, uh, people don't have sufficient information on how and what the government will do or tackle the problem. You know, the problems are not just when we are giving uh, uh, employment to one million people or five million people. No. How will this employment be generated? So all these things have to be disseminated properly, and the people have to be 
you know, informed and had the trust in government. You know, the 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 situation right now is so is becoming tense. When people don't know how to leave tomorrow, you go to the bus stop today is eight hundred naira, and tomorrow morning it becomes one thousand five hundred, and your salary has not changed. So these are the things that people are now thinking: for how long can we bear them? You know. So the government has to move fast in giving this policy, if it has been planned, in bringing shelter, in bringing relief to people within the next few weeks and few months. It shouldn't be too long because people are feeling the MSME, most of the small scale entrepreneurs, we close shops. And that is so bad. Because see, even if someone is employing five people or ten people or two people, and you, you link this to group up, at the end of the day, the employment market will begin to swell again. And this will cause a lot of commotion, if case not taken. So the government has to act fast. I know that it's just about you know, 30 days, but the expectation is there and it's very high. And the people in the government, they know this, because it, it is not something that just happened overnight. So now what we expect is that the government will come up with his uh, ministerial post being filled. When the ministerial post is being filled, you now know who is the competent person to talk to or to you know, refer your case with you. So this has to happen within the next few weeks, you know, so that people will begin to feel, okay, now we know who is the minister of labor, who is the minister of health, and all those things. So these positions must be filled as soon as possible. And then the single digit loan has to be effective. But who is the minister that will be responsible for this? Mm. So now it has to be uh, a gradual process, but the gradual process has to be as part of uh, the people want it. Mm. Okay, well, another scary thing, just because of what you have said already, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria has said that a lot of international manufacturers are ready to leave the country because of what is happening right now. And there's no buffer some, of some sort. There's no, no, no cushion for them that the government is giving so that they will stay back. No incentive of any nature. But they're just, as a result of uh, the fuel subsidy removal, which has made life so unbearable, uh, they are planning to leave. And this is the government that wants to create a lot of jobs. And like you ask, what's going to, how are the jobs going to be created? And so it's, it's really, really worrisome. But the question is now, um, do you really trust that palliatives that they're talking about, now, now seeing the kind of experience that we've had in the school feeding program, in the cash transfer, uh, cash transfer to the vulnerable people, to the uh, trader money and all that, with all that, those experiences, do you really think palliatives uh, or that they, they're trying to talk about now will be anything to write home about? I mean, they must have learned a lesson from the past, me. Uh, the same uh, party that has been uh, ruled in the past years, and they are coming in again uh, to continue. So they must have learned from the mistakes of the past leadership and try to correct them. That's what I believe they will have, they will have done. They will have done their own work. Um, most of the things I keep wondering is when you want to give money or give anything to people, what is the criteria? You know, what we do have the database to know who is the poorest in your community or who is one of the poorest. So these are the things we have to face. You know, and now the people are feeling the pain more and more. Imagine yesterday I was reading that uh, beginning from the of July in Lagos, they will be charging 1,000 naira mm. uh, for you know, proof of ownership yeah. of your car. So if you are going to pay 1,000 naira, you look at it as a one of thing too. But you know, multiply it by another for something a uh, million of pounds. So what is this money going to be used for? You know, the people are not going to palliate and you are charging them again. I mean, these are the things we have to look for, and they are still giving is just that it will you know, protect the integrity of the vessel. What integrity is that? Mm. You know, you have the vessel and says you have the VRO who's taking the papers, you have all those things. Then now you are charging 1,000 naira again, proof of ownership for certificate, uh, proof of ownership certificate. What is that? So the more you continue to tax the people, the more they begin to think that we can breathe again. 
Mm. So the government has to look into all these things carefully. I mean, and begin to dish out more uh, incentives that we encourage the manufacturers, that we encourage the employers to begin to do something. It is not just the fact that everybody will more and more. I know because of some of these things, uh, you know, we are committed to. I, I am going to come with zone order, and one man to come with zone order after everything that everybody is telling us what to do. But in some cases, these fears, these economic fears, have failed us. And then we have to look at the solution, the new solution internally. And it, it, that, that is what the people are expecting. We are committed to so many things, we have to pay so many debts, and we are now in, in, a, in, a, in a mess. So it is not this government alone, but the government just have to try a better way to do it. And that is the information to build the trust in the people. Because otherwise the honeymoon will soon be over. Yeah, we, we've had mixed feelings uh, from people because um, even in all this, uh, not much is being talked about in, in terms of uh, refurbishing our refineries, putting them back in, in good shape or building new ones or even making it easy enough for the people who want to go into that industry and have refineries for themselves. We do know that, okay, they say the licenses are there and all that, but right, right now we still see people being... Uh, being given uh, certificates or licenses to import fuel into the country, including uh, the Dangote that has, um, has had his uh, refinery commissioned a few weeks ago by the former president, Muhammadu Buhari. Now Nigerians are just, just crying that if that can happen, that means that we are back to the same circle. We are not going anywhere. There's no breakaway. And also, there's a conspiracy theory. I'll call it a conspiracy theory because they may not have any proof, but um, it points to something like that. Some people are saying that the 1,000 Naira as proof of ownership for vehicles is just another way of taking money that should have been collected from the toll gate, which is not happening right now because of, you know, uh, you and I know what happened at the toll gate, and then the money being collected is no longer collected. So they are looking for ways to uh, reinflate the purse where that money could have entered. So a lot of things are coming because um, the, the policies of government seem to be shrouded in secrecy that we don't know a lot about. So what do you think about this? Uh, uh, the fact that um, fuel subsidy has been removed, but refineries, nothing much is being said about it. What is your own feeling regarding this? I want to tell you, uh, it, it was something that they have to win in the fall. Oh, no, and I, I don't believe in conspiracy theory. I don't believe in all these questions and all this. I mean, the fact is, the government can find means and ways to generate money, to, you know, create taxes and avenues to make money of taxes. But whatever. the question is, are but Nigerians not overtaxed already? The people must be given time. You don't just wake up and say within 24 hours we are going to start collecting the taxes for this and that. Yeah. You know, you can give us three months to say, okay, from this moment, you know, we will be doing this. The people we are going to prepare, that is what I know how it's been done. You know, in other places. I've lived in some other places, I understand that. You know, even when the, the, when the euro, the Dutch mark was sent into euro, they gave the people enough time. When they were increasing the BAT in Germany, they gave the people a lot of time. I know, I mean, but then when it was increased from 11 to 13 to 15 to 17, and to 19, so this thing you have to continue to do it. It is part of how to generate money. But they must tell you, this money we are generating is for this, is for that. Information must be disseminated. And you can't do this within 24 hours. How many people will read the newspaper when you talk press conference? How many people will watch the television when there's no electricity? So these are the things we have to consider. I can understand it. You know, if you issue certificates or licenses to bring in for it is part of the economy, it is part of the commerce. You know, trade must go on. So we cannot just stop everything and then suddenly we find ourselves, you know, having shortage of work, then we start crying again. So before you repair or you even rebuild an refinery, it takes some time, and the people want to have a good life before you rebuild or you refurbish. Mm. So these are the things we have to consider. So even if they want to take toll fee, why? But let the people understand. You know, these are the things that people would pay. You know, you want to take a radio charges or radio tax. 
Yes, but let the people understand it. Mm. You know, it's about information. The people must trust the government. Yeah, because uh, what 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 is here is there is there is this uh, um, I don't know what controversy, if you may. Um, some people say the tax net in Nigeria is so narrow that's why they don't make enough money. And some other people are thinking that the people who are paying the tax they are overtaxed. Nigerians are overtaxed, and that is why the issue of uh, this 1,000 naira that came up again immediately after the 7.5% uh, of VAT that will be added to some products and so many other things, Nigerians feel that they are overtaxed. Do you think Nigeria is having a fair, uh, a f a fair dose of this taxation that uh, we're having right now in our country? I, I think taxes are being reviewed all over the world regularly. And right now, even in Kenya, in Uganda, in all of African countries, you see this thing happening. But the fact is they never streamline the taxes. You know, if you want to have all this reform, you should streamline them. You see, I have no problem if you want to, you know, increase the taxes on champagne. You know, if you say 50% on cigarettes, 100% of cigarettes, I have no problem with that. And I don't think I just have problems with that. You know, but you have to consider the fact that basic things will not be taxed in a way that people will feel that they can't even, you know, leave again. Mm. You know, that's not the thing. You know, if you say everybody bringing in all these SUVs, you know, and they would bulletproof that you pay 500%, who cares? Nobody will say no because how many people will afford that? You know, if you say now that bringing leather, uh, leather boxes and leather shoes to Nigeria, we attract 100%. I'm sure that people can buy made in Nigeria, made in Africa, made in wherever. Yes, people will understand that. So we don't have to just tax arbitrarily and not streamlining it. Today there is one tax, tomorrow there is another tax. And we have to get the this system of saying, look, let this thing go at first and test the market and believe that okay, we now say it's a few close. So a few days is say, oh, you know, bringing tax to this country, you have to pay 45%. After two so few, after three or four days, before it's fake news. The other day, there was a news going around where you said, okay, uh, they're increasing uh, the salaries of the president and vice president and all the top people. And after a week or so, it's a fake news. So let us get against it. And that is why I'm saying that it should be very useful now. It is very important to have head of all these ministries to have a perfect ministry with a real minister telling them so that we can hear exactly what we want to hear and what the government wants to tell them. So these are all built up. And the people want to have you know, everything segregated in a way that we know the right information is being discussed and they're understanding it. That can be increased or can be collected. But streamlining the situation whereby you have three or four or five different taxes or ten different taxes. You know, food should be something that should be a priority. We give tax, most of these local foods or the manufacturers should be, big, be given, uh, you know, some incentives. You know, if we are talking about technology, look at technology. We are importing a, a, a laptops and all these computers. Okay. Give them enough time to look at this thing. In the next six months, you can bring these things to the pay less. All right. People will have access to enough funds to buy all this. But by the way, look at how these young men and women in the food tech industry they created the industry. They source their money. It is not through the government. And we are having young men and women bringing in millions and millions okay. you know, of, of dollars into this country. Despite all this. Okay, so Mr. now, Mr. Mr. Thing really is happening. This, they are not getting the money through IMF or through World Bank. They are getting it through businesses. All right. So that means a lot that we achieve in this country. That okay. means we have, we have the, 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 the chances of making it big. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Um, well, <clears throat> taxation or taxes, they are not bad. Give us time and tell us what you're using it for. That's a, a good way to end it there. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Joe Femi Dagunro, for coming on the show this morning and uh, helping us uh, make sense of what is happening. I appreciate it. Okay, we've been talking with Mr. Joe Femi Dagunro, Chief Strategist of Westphalia Resources. I will take a very short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at another issue bothering us. Stay with us.